Hi guys, my name is Shane Cashin and you are watching Tennis Ninja TV. Aloha guys, once again, welcome back to Tennis Ninja TV. I'm your host Shane Cashin, the Tennis Ninja, and uh, I have a good friend of mine who's actually one of the sons of Albert Murata, which we interviewed last week. Uh, he's currently a senior at Pacific University playing on the team. He was a former Hawaii junior. Ladies and gentlemen, guys, I give you Raiden Murata. Raiden, <laughs> thanks for joining us today. No, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Man, I love the shirt, Pacific University, man. But I know, yeah, thank you. <laughs> what is going on down there, man? I mean, I know you're up in the mainland across the pond here from the Pacific. And, mm -hmm. and you know, what's life like up there, man, in quarantine? Um, you know, I mean, all our classes have went online. So it's, it's a weird experience because I've never had that. Um, Kobe was going to online school a couple of years of high school. So he was a lot more comfortable with it. But it's, it's been weird. I feel like it's a lot more. You know, I, have my, I have so many things posted on my walls, like, rubrics and schedules and it's just hard to keep track of but luckily I, I heard it's pretty bad down there as far as the tennis situation goes in Hawaii um, but we have a high school court that we could hit on as long as it's not raining. Everybody in Hawaii as well as my own jealousy when you said you get to actually hit went up that much just FYI. <laughs> oh yeah I mean as long as it's not raining and Oregon's known for rain so you know realistically it's I guess it's better than back home but maybe once or twice a week, yeah. You know, not many people may know the true story of Raiden Murata as a junior in Hawaii. Um, take us through that experience and um, some highlights you've had that uh, you very, remember very fondly about your uh, junior career. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we were pretty much born into it, you know, with our dad being Albert Murata, and we kind of had a chip on our shoulder growing up just because, you know, we we're always Albert's sons. Mm -hmm. And... I still feel that. Too. I mean, it's, I could argue that that's still like that. We played soccer and tennis growing up until I think 10 years old or something. And then we had to choose because the schedules would come conflict like that. But I mean, we were pretty casual up until age when I was 14 and Kobe was 12. And I remember just, I, I have not, I didn't win, get a win, a single win um, in a tournament at least until I was 16 or 17. So that was, like two or three straight years of just losing first round main draw losing first round consolation draw with jtt it was luckily that jtt was in there because i could get some wins in there and not feel completely defeated um but yeah i got more serious about it around 15 16 years old um i went to i don't know if you know marvin sanamitsu um he coached kamuki for a year a, a few years actually he taught me like yoga and some weightlifting stuff. And you had to do some unconventional things. You know, you couldn't just hit every day. There's other aspects to it. But going to him really changed my career. And my freshman year of high school, I actually lost first round of OIA East, um, which is the very first round of any qualifying for anything. Um, and the year after that, I made it to States. And so it was that summer that really changed, changed how I played and treated tennis. My high school days, we were getting kind of taught out of, you know, the Brian Brothers playbook. Mm -hmm. One thing that I really liked about how we trained was we went on this um, nine week progression. <clears throat> so we really like mapped everything out as much as we could. And I think it helped me a lot. By the end of that, we would, then our tournament would be there and be ready. We would be ready for, um, a match play like that so that was I, I really liked that way of training because it kind of kept you accountable and it you had a schedule you had to stick to one of the biggest things I feel like if you don't plan your practices in advance it's super easy to just blow off and the days keep building up and building up and so that really I think helped us to keep us accountable like that so by, the, by the time I was a senior um, we placed fourth in states we were seated, I think we were seated fifth, and we upset the number two team in the quarters. Unfortunately, um, we played Ren, our teammate, in the semis, and three out of the four guys on court were cramping, and so it was not a pretty match. But, I mean, just to place in states as a public school is such a big thing for us, and 
we were the first people for Kalani to do that besides Jared Spiker. And then, yeah, that summer, my senior summer, I got invited to play for that national team, the boys national team for Hawaii. And even though I, that's usually for, you know, sophomores and juniors who are looking at, because there's a lot of D1 scouts and college scouts there, but I had already committed to Pacific and I just wanted to go just because I've always wanted to be a part of like a zonal team or like a national team like that. And I lost almost every match up there, which is, you know, tough, but I did get one win in doubles with Brent Brasola. And so that was pretty awesome. And that from there kind of just prepared me for mainland playing. Yeah, it sounded like your career as a junior really made a difference when you started focusing on your physical aspect off court, uh, learning double strategy in particular, that sounded like a huge turnaround. And just really focusing, I think, differently once you got to high school tennis, as well as the team aspect. It seemed like the team aspect also played a big role in your, um, mm-hmm. in your growth. Yeah. Could you share a little bit about that actually in particular in your junior career, just how those key moments really helped you develop? Yeah, that was one of the biggest challenges in high school is just finding the right and most effective things. And I think I, I wish I had known back then what I know now about the ways to work out and stuff like that. Because a lot of times where it's like in high school, you're just like, I don't know what to do, so I'm not going to do anything. You know, and it's super easy to be lazy in high school. And that's something that, you know, I kind of regret. If you watched last week's episode with my dad's, you know, sportsmanship story, that was actually, I don't know if he told you this, but I had an assignment this year and to write about one of your heroes. And that exact two stories was in that um, paper about my dad that I wrote. And um, that sportsmanship story that he shared really defined who I, who I became and I think who Kobe became as well. And so that was a big thing in some JTT where it's just, it's really to make friends and kind of to maintain that, that level for the most part, but really to create connections. And that's how we met, you know, some of our closest tennis friends now and through JTT and tournament play. Um, As far as high school teams, I think that was really fun. And that helped me develop some leadership skills because by the second and third, my third and fourth year at Kalani, I kind of had to step into that leadership role. I remember my junior year, I think we were the ones to actually kind of order the uniforms. I don't know if that's okay to say out loud, but we kind of handled the uniform order and stuff like that. And just little leadership things like that, where I would plan team bonding things. And high school was really fun. I I really enjoyed it. Um, I think all those things really kind of, I think you need to have a balance of everything. I, I, I really enjoy JTT um, and I really enjoy tournament play and having that balance is important to find because if you, if you play too many tournaments and your parents push it on you too much, it's really easy to get burnt out. Mm. You know, I really wish, sometimes I wish that, you know, my dad was a little bit more strict or he yelled at us and stuff like that. But looking back, if he had done that, I think it would have been really easy to push us away from tennis. Um, And so it's just finding a balance of doing both, really. I want to spin off now to your college career, just because, um, you know, you're, you were a Hawaii local boy and you're playing ball now with some of the best kids in the nation really now. And, you know, these guys, they play tennis for a living basically. So um, what's that been like for almost four years worth of playing for Pacific? Um, you know, take us through the, the highlights of your career so far. Coming into freshman year, I, I didn't visit any college. Um, scheduling and money was an issue, so we didn't make any college recruiting trips. So I was choosing colleges based on online and what people told me. I wanted to get away, but I didn't want to feel like a, stra- like a complete stranger. And so Pacific is, I don't know, uh, 25% or 20% kids from Hawaii. Oh, cool. And so it was like going to UH on the mainland, basically. And one of the selling points was that they sold, they had rice with every meal. Oh, yes. Um, Got to have <laughs> <laughs> um, But And so it was just all these little things. And um, Ford, one of my roommate, my freshman year, he also played Hawaii tennis and he was going. 
and Sophia Nishimura. She played for IAEA. She was also going, so I think my friends are going, and so I might as well check it out. It was a cool experience to step foot on a college campus. Um, the team was super accommodating. I don't know if you know Sage Katayama. He was already on the team. He was from Hawaii as well. I play, I started in third doubles with Sage for half the season. Then I worked my way into the singles lineup. Um, and then I switched doubles partner with Ford. And so I was playing six singles and third doubles pretty consistently my freshman year. My freshman year was just a bunch of learning, really. It was really awesome though, because that was my, the coach that recruited me, that was his last year. And we ended up going to North Carolina to play. And we got to visit Duke and UNC and we watched a Virginia match when they had Tyson Kwiatkowski. I beat Francis Tiafo's brother. We played him in a match and I beat him in doubles. So that was a nice win. It says F Tiafo on my UTR. But yeah, my sophomore year, I had a breakout season kind of. I think I had 13 wins or something like that, which I think the most in a season for Pacific was 15 or something. And so I was playing a little bit better. I was more willing to, you know, grind. And um, it could have been I dyed my hair blonde that year and it could have been that. I remember that. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever do that again. But that season I got a win against a D1 opponent, um, University of Northern Colorado. And it was a 15-13 in the third tiebreaker, third set tiebreaker. And so that was a really nice win. I got my first um, – Northwest Conference Player of the Week award that season. I was in the Hawaii newspaper for that, and that was really awesome. I think that season was just learning about being okay with playing ways that I – winning ugly sometimes, you know. If you're not playing good, you just sometimes you just got to play good enough, which is a tough lesson for me to learn. Mm -hmm. But I think I finally kind of got that. I think this season, like I said that to my coach, and he's like, I don't think I've ever – heard you say that and I think I'm finally starting to get to you junior year that was pretty awesome that was Ren Ren came in Joey came in Kobe came in and so you know it was like kind of like an all-star Hawaii team <laughs> in the Pacific Northwest and it from the start we had a preseason tournament and Ren beat the best player in our conference having Kobe up here was awesome we we beat you know, and Whitman is the number one school in our conference, and we, me and Kobe beat them, their first doubles, 8-3. Um, so that was pretty awesome. And nice. we had some tough losses in the season as well, but we beat a D2 opponent together that season. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was a nice way to kind of get comfortable with having these guys here. And it was all building up to, you know, this season, my senior season. Unfortunately, that got, you know, cut short, but I think we were on the right track. We suffered some pretty tough losses in the beginning. We had to play, you know, CMS. We had to play, who else did we play? Caltech, Trinity, HPU. <laughs> the highlight of that was, the highlight of this season so far was that. And we almost took HPU's second doubles. You know, they're, they're a school that in Hawaii, you just grow up like they're untouchable. And so for me and Kobe to, you know, take it to a tiebreaker and almost take them, that was not necessarily a dream come true, but that was, you know, my mom was even like, that was the best use that you guys have ever played and you guys should be proud of that even if you lost. But, you know, it's just so cool that seeing all these Hawaii kids make it and uh, be able to do this. I've said it before, it, it, paves, it um, paves the way for all these other kids to believe that they can make it. And um, it's so huge uh, that you guys are doing what you do, regardless whether you win or lose. I mean, we're super proud of you guys. And, uh, you know, it, it gives our next generation of juniors, um, you know, a dream to work towards. So thank you. All right, let's get into your dabbling with coaching because, um, you know, a few people in Hawaii have noticed that you've been out there feeding balls at USDA clinics and yeah. I remember I even visited this uh millennials tennis clinic that the USDA <laughs> was on the white pacific section and you were there coaching uh my group that I got to play in what's that been like Raiden being able being a former junior and now giving back to the gym okay so that that millennial clinic just uh, that was a really awkward experience because you know I mean you're you're usually the coach out there and I've seen you coach and 
you've coached against me. And so for me to <laughs> coach you, that was a weird experience. Coaching, I've always loved tennis. And, you know, my dad was a coach, is a coach. And it started off as a way to get an off-campus pass for high school <laughs> my senior year. We needed to do either a volunteer experience or a job to get that off-campus pass so that I could practice more. I started volunteering and I thought it was going to be temporary at first because I just wanted that, you know, that off-campus pass. But I kind of realized that you could make good money, you know, coaching tennis. And this is something that I love, something that I do a lot of research about. And a lot of people have said like, oh, you never worked a real job in your life. And it's like, I'm not. I'm working smarter. That's why I'm not, I'm doing something that I love. And I started with the USTA um, volunteering there. And then eventually I started getting paid for doing that. And I love, I loved coaching for the USTA just because like a lot of the kids there, um, that's kind of like their, their beginning stages. That's their like JGT start. And I would love to coach kids that are more serious about it <clears throat> because I feel like I'm a little bit better and more competitive aspect of it it kind of gave me a different perspective on tennis it, it made me think about it a little bit more analytically <laughs> um and it kind of got helped me to get creative with myself it, it helped me create drills that i can do for myself and i can do with kobe and i can do with my dad it also helped me obviously with like leadership because i'm i don't know if you know this but i'm the team captain for one of the team captains for the pacific team and I am also a uh, president of the uh, student athlete advisory committee at, at school, which is a role that I would have never guessed that I would have done. My freshman year, we had really great leaders on the team, great team captains. And, you know, after they graduated, it's like, who's going to step up? And, you know, with Kobe's generation, with Ren and Joey, we had a lot of young guys. So it helped me kind of just fit into that role. One of my dreams is to coach against my dad. <laughs> I would love to coach a team against my dad and counter all his plays. I would totally be, get a seat for that one, man. I look forward to that day. So, guys, if you were watching, you heard it right there from Raiden. He called out his dad. So, <laughs> the challenge needs to be accepted. We're waiting on you. <laughs> what, what's next for Raiden Murata after college? Hmm. That's always a tough question to answer because, you know, I don't really know. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people do know, but I'd rather do something that I'm going to be happy in than do something where I'm just kind of mindless and just working a nine to five every day. Um, so if you don't know, I'm a film and video major. I feel like storytelling and like people have the ability to you know really do some impact have some impact on um, on the world and stuff like that and so the most relevant way to do that would be to I mean who doesn't like watching like an entertaining video or a good movie kind of thing and that's the best way just to tell stories and the biggest thing with me is that I just want to hopefully inspire someone or another generation I think that's why I love coaching because I want to be a part of their journey. Um, but as I kind of progress through the film and video me, um, major, I kind of realized that film and video is a lot more, there's such a huge market for it because, you know, um, digital content falls into that, that, um, that realm and every business needs like a content creator or a graphic artist or a, videographer for you know commercials or website content i've also been working and helping my sports information director who um, kind of promotes our sports on all social media and i've been creating like highlight films and stuff like that and it kind of got me thinking like i would love to you know make videos for the chicago bulls or like a team like that you know like chicago's my favorite you know my favorite <laughs> team but so i actually got an interview um, two interviews with the Seattle Seahawks. Wow. If, if I get that, I have no idea. I, I, I have no idea. But, you know, it's just opportunities like that where it's like, yes, I'm doing film and video, but there's a lot more to it than I think a lot of people think. And there's a lot of opportunities. And I would love to, you know, end up coaching one day 
if I could, if I could make a livable wage off of coaching, I would, I would do that. You know, if a coach has character, people are attracted to that. And, um, you know, you definitely have that, my friend, and you have a gift to, uh, to reach people when it comes to that. And I see the sparkle in their eye when, uh, you know, even at that millennial clinic, everybody was having a great time and they were learning something. I actually would learn something too. Like just you feeding balls to me, me getting to play. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very special being a coach. You know, I want to pivot to the last section of our interview here, which is the Q and a, and, uh, you can <laughs> answer short or you can be lengthy, whatever you want. Um, these are just questions that I came up with and had some inspiration from your dad too. What was your most memorable experience as a junior player in Hawaii? There is one defining moment um, mm. of my tennis career that I finally figured out. I still, okay. So I have this ritual. Every time I go on a plane, because I'm so bored, <laughs> I have this 10 minute video of me and Kobe playing a tiebreaker. Mm. And this is from my senior year that match that I was telling you about where we were the fifth seeds, we played the second seeds in the quarters. We were playing against um, Jason Davin from Milani, who have been a very, very good doubles team in Hawaii for a while. And we've never beat them. We lost every time in the Hawaii finals. And so going into that match, we're like, you know, this is the seed that we won. Like we played them so many times. Like that was the first match of the day. And it was at Holua on the Big Island. This is the first time my grandparents got to watch. On the My dad's parents are from the Big Island. That's why. Um, so this is the first time they got to watch us play competitively. But just something about that day wasn't clicking. It was just, it, it, it was not good the first set. I think it might have been 1-6. We lost first set. And we have this ritual where if we're losing the first set, out of two out of three, we usually just go to the bathroom. I remember walking to that bathroom and I was crying and Kobe was crying because we're like, this is possibly the last time we're ever going to play together as, as kids. And we're just kind of crying about it because it's like, we don't want to end it like this. Like, this is not what's supposed to happen. We washed up and we came back to the court. We were down 1-4, second set. And we're just like, if we're going to lose, we're not going to lose being mad about it like we're not gonna waste our last time on this little like after a few games here and there we found ourselves at a tiebreaker in the second set I think it might have been a tiebreaker or 7-5 or something but we ended up winning that set um from down 1-4 wow and then the third set tiebreaker this is what I watch you know every plane trip because it, it's still like I'm watching it and I remember being there and it still gives me kind of like like, you know, those chills or it's like, we just, you could see how much passion and how badly we really wanted it where we were like celebrating after every point. And as soon as we win that tiebreaker, we just drop our rackets and we hug each other, you know, like that was the match of, I think my junior career, because that was the moment where it's like, that was our first win against a team that was a spot like seated higher than us I'm so thankful that I think I forget who caught it on camera I think it might have been Mike Shima um, I'm so thankful that he he got that on film because I have that clip on my phone and I can just watch it whenever I need some motivation you know what is the biggest thing that you've learned as a college tennis player the first thing that comes to mind when, when you ask that question is that you have to be willing, like I said, you have to be willing to win ugly. And when I say that, I don't mean get in their heads and be a bad sport. I'm saying you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to win. So even if you're not playing good that day, it doesn't mean you're going to lose. It just means you're going to have to be creative with how you win, you know, um, and that's a lesson that I didn't really like learn until this season where it's like the whole, I always had this in my head where it's like being a coach's son, I always had to make sure I was doing the proper footwork, the proper technique. And that's always kind of limited me in how I played my junior and senior year. I started just like, I'm just like, I have two years left. Like I'm just going to play. And it, it was 
a lot more fun, I think, for me to do that. Um, even though I just stopped caring about how I looked on the court. Because, you know, I mean, with all this practice, like, you should expect to be at least at some level where you look fine. Because I've always been really hard on myself. I've always compared myself to, you know, Kobe and Ren and Joey because they're younger than me and they're better than me, you know? Um, and so I, I had to learn how to stop caring about that. And, you know, they're my teammates now. And so it's really just, it's a team game. And just being happy with, if you win one day, it doesn't matter if you won close, you won like far apart. You just got to give yourself some credit sometimes. And that's something that I didn't do enough um, throughout my career. And so that was one of the biggest things that I learned and I applied this season. And that brings me to my last question I had for you. And uh, I guess this is going to be a theme now for almost every video I do. Um, Cause Kyle answered this and your dad, I didn't ask him this and he answered it anyway. Um, Raiden, if you could give one tip to an upcoming junior um, in terms of their tennis journey ahead of them, what would you want them to know? My overall tip for any of you junior players is just you not only be willing to work hard and stuff like that, like what you put in is what you're going to get out. And it's not really about the hours that you put in, but it's, you know, what you put in those hours, really. I think you just got to be more conscious about how you're, how you're working, you know, just the biggest thing for me has been working efficiently. Sometimes I feel like I'm getting out there for two hours and not getting better. I'm just doing nothing. <laughs> I'm just hitting, going through the motions. And, you know, if it, if it gets to a point like that, sometimes it's just better to, to take the day off. You know, you don't have to be playing every, you don't have to be playing every day, um, two hours a day, if you're not getting anything out of it. Don't be hard on yourself. That's, you know, in tennis, like it's such a mental game. And I know I'm the number one person to do this, but you cannot overthink things. You just gotta just play, honestly. Like that's <clears throat> as simple as it sounds, like let just play, like two words it's the hardest thing to do. And sometimes you just got to get out of your own head and you got to think about why you're playing tennis in the first place, right? Like you're not, like no one starts tennis, like I'm going to pick up tennis and become professional. I'm going to pick up tennis and this is going to pay for my college. No one starts like that. Like you all, whenever you start tennis, you're starting it because it's a fun thing to do, right? It's a new activity. It's something fun. And so you just need to understand that no matter where you are in your career, that's, that's where you started and that's where you, why you should be playing. That's been a tough lesson for me. It's so easy to get caught up in competition and so easy to get caught up in what's going around in league matches where you, you always forget that. And that's something that I think my dad was trying to teach me and I didn't really understand that until I started saying it out loud just now. Is you have a moment right now, is there anything you would like to say to the Hawaii tennis community out there? Give any shout outs? Yeah, I mean, for those of you that are watching, obviously I don't speak for every tennis player out there. I don't speak for every D3 tennis player out there. Um, but there's, there's an opportunity for everything in tennis, you know, like I'm at D3 because I want to study my, all my schoolwork while being able to play tennis. I know for D1 athletes, they, I can't speak for them, but, you know, they're probably there getting paid to be there and play, and they're getting there because that's the career that they might go into. Um, but there's, no matter what, there's always a place for you somewhere in, in the tennis community. The only other thing is, like, I really hope that Kailua is still on this year, man. Like, mm. that's, if it's not on this year, then I got to come back next year. That's the one tournament that as soon as my season was canceled, I told Kobe, like, okay, we got to start training for Kailua then. <laughs> awesome. Um, that's something that, you know, we're, we're coming for that one year. We're going to, we're going to, we're taking that one year. I'm excited to keep playing tennis in Hawaii. There's nothing like it. That's cool, man. That's a, that's a great place to call it a day, Raiden. Uh, Raiden, thank you so much for joining me here on Tennis Ninja TV and, uh, being a special guest of mine and thank you for sharing uh, a really insightful um, viewpoint of college tennis and just your experience from juniors to college 
uh, you know, as well as where you're going to be heading in the future, man. Um, Raiden, I wish you all the best, with, whether you go through film, the tennis court, or whatever is next for you, buddy. I truly um, admire how much you've grown, and I respect what you do, and um, I'm really proud of you, you know, just seeing what you've done with tennis and uh, just using that passion and gift of yours to, you know, keep growing yourself as well as bless others along the way. Um, tennis Ninja TV, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that we can, again, put smiles on your guys' faces during this time and uh, mm. get the sport out there. So we will see you on the next interview. Until then, guys, God bless, be safe, and we'll see you later.